welcome. My name is Lester Hillman and I'm a tour guide uh, for Camden and a historian and writer. Lester, I've been a London taxi driver for over 25 years. I've passed this church countless times. It's the first time I've been inside. It's a church that we think has 2,000 years of history here. The wall behind us, stitched into the fabric, is Roman tile, Roman brick. There are monuments to individuals who had key roles in English history. Queen Elizabeth I Cook, for oh, 29 right. years, Daniel Clark and his wife Catherine served in the royal pantries and is buried here. Evidence of who the vicars have been here. A wonderful man called Charles Lee, uh, before the invention of the internet, did incredible amount of study and he pieced together over 50 vicars, witnesses at key moments in English history, from Fulcherius in the 1100s, right through to the present time. Roger was a priest here at the time of Magna Carta. We know that um, John Clifton probably witnessed the Holy Roman Emperor going by for those peace negotiations after Agincourt. Lester, I'm looking at the altar. It looks fairly plain. The altar is, as you say, a, a simple altar, but set into it is a nave altar that some people think may date from the 7th or 8th century. It's Kentish ragstone, and we know that Around the 1290s, there was an inquisition here or an audit, and uh, there was reference to this nave altar. Um, it then disappears, but in the mid 19th century, digging to replace the tower, upturned the altar with the church silver. We think it was buried there at the time of the English Civil War and uh, is now uh, incorporated back into the fabric of the church. Over 2,000 years, the church has been remodeled a number of times and reused materials. In the 19th century, it was brought back into use as a parish church and it indeed had galleries here for hundreds of people. There are no pews here today and other detailing has changed since after the Second World War. And we have these chairs uh, which are quite low. People today are somewhat taller than they were in the 19th yeah, yeah. century, so perhaps it's time for us to think about a new seating. What was the area like prior to the railway around the church? It would have been pleasure gardens in terms of places of refreshment, spas, uh, farmland and open space. And of course, let's not forget the River Fleet, which had a major influence on this area and now is almost hidden. The gardens here have a wealth of individuals and personalities and drama. The author of Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, for a time, she lived just over by the hedgerow there. She was brought up in this area. Her parents were married in St Pancras Old Church. And I think she got some of her ideas about science from living here and the changes in um, new gas works, new technology, the Regent's Canal oh, coming yeah, here. In terms of numbers of people that come into the gardens, the principal reason they come is Thomas Hardy. We have a spectacular ash tree surrounded by gravestones, gravestones that became available when the gardens gave up space for the building of the railway oh, in yeah. 1867. They probably didn't think that it would become this iconic fusing of stone and tree when they first put them there. And Thomas Hardy oversaw the seemly treatment of the burials and reinterments and the works going on. It had an enormous effect on him. He gave up uh, his work in London he went back to Dorset and became the writer and poet that we know of. So are there any other special groups of people who are synonymous with this cemetery? Specialist interest groups come round here all the time. John Mills, the last survivor from the Black Hole of Calcutta, is buried here. And of course, Charles Dickens' school teacher, a man called William Jones. Lester, I'm sort of very aware of the area and the changes that are occurring here. Um, do you want to talk me how you see them? 
When we look at the skyline beyond the churchyard, it is changing before our very eyes. There are huge new residential communities moving into the King's Cross lands. We have several universities, the University of the Arts, and that, I think, is an interesting new chapter for St Pancras. So the future for the area is looking very bright, it's and its historical past will remain intact.